in a previous video we spoke about glycolysis which is the conversion of the six carbon molecule glucose into two molecules of pyruvate which is a three carbon compound in the process two molecules of NADHs which are electron carriers were released and a net of two ATPs were also released. Now this does happen from one molecule of glucose but do you think this is enough for the cells to survive for the organisms to survive to perform their daily functions to reproduce etc. The ATP produced as a result of glycolysis is nowhere enough for the organism to survive. In fact, glycolysis is just the first step in the process of cellular respiration. The cell still needs to perform a lot of steps to produce maximum number of ATPs. So the second step in cellular respiration depends on whether oxygen is present or not. And it is pyruvate that is going to undergo this next step to produce more energy. So the process that pyruvate undergoes when oxygen is present is called the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle, TCA cycle. This takes place only in the presence of oxygen in aerobic organisms. Try to recall what happens to pyruvate in the absence of oxygen. So what happens to pyruvate in the presence of oxygen is that it's going to get oxidated. Of course, oxygen oxidated. But do you see oxygen here anywhere? Do you see it here? No, right? Then how is it oxidation? If you remember from chemistry, the definition of oxidation is not just addition of oxygen. It is also the removal of hydrogen, right? That is what is happening here. The three carbon molecule pyruvate is converted to a two carbon molecule acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA stands for acetyl coenzyme A. Now, because it is an oxidation process, a hydrogen is released and that hydrogen reacts with NAD+, producing NADH and H+. This is, as you can remember, it's the electron carrier. And because the number of carbon atoms is decreasing by 1, 3 carbon to 2 carbon, a carbon dioxide molecule is released in this process. This is what we exhale out. And it is this acetyl-CoA that then enters the citric acid cycle. Now one more thing that you should remember is that this step takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria. Glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm. From there, pyruvate enters the mitochondrial matrix where pyruvate oxidation takes place and then subsequently Krebs cycle takes place. And Krebs cycle involves this acetyl-CoA reacting with a 4-carbon compound called oxaloacetic acid to give the first product which is the citric acid. That's why it's called the citric acid cycle. Citric acid is a 6-carbon compound, it's also called as citrate. Now this is a cyclical process, a cyclical reaction that ends in oxaloacetate being regenerated each time. So this cycle is from one pyruvate molecule. So for each glucose which produces two pyruvates, this cycle happens twice. So what happens in this cycle is that through a series of reactions, more numbers of NADH is produced. Now why is the production of NADH and FADH2, which is another electron carrier important? We'll get to that in just a while. The steps of the citric acid cycle are important, but I'm not going to go into the detail of the steps. You can pause the video and understand the different steps involved. But I'm going to focus on wherever NADH and other electron carriers and ATP are produced. So the first step where NADH is produced in the citric acid cycle, I'm not talking about pyruvate oxidation, in the citric acid cycle is when this six carbon isocitrate is converted to this 5-carbon alpha-ketoglutarate. So one molecule of NADH is released. Remember, this is still from one pyruvate. In the process, because the number of carbon atoms is decreasing, one carbon atom is released as carbon dioxide. In the next step, this 5-carbon alpha-ketoglutarate is converted to this 4-carbon succinyl-CoA. Another NADH is produced here and another carbon dioxide is released here. When the succinyl-CoA is converted to succinate, a molecule of ATP is produced. And when the succinate is converted to fumarate, 
another electron carrier known as F8DH2 that is also produced from FAD. Again, keep in mind this is all from one pyruvate molecule. When malate is converted back to oxaloacetate, another NADH is produced. So, bringing the total of NADH is produced from one pyruvate to three. So, from one pyruvate, as a result of this Krebs cycle, we get three NADHs, one FADH2, and one ATP. Now, again, this process also produces just one ATP. And glycolysis also had a net of two ATPs. This is also nowhere nearly enough for the cells to survive. So now it is up to these two, these electron carriers to go ahead and produce more number of ATPs through the process of the electron transport chain. That is why the citric acid cycle even occurs. So it produces these many electron carriers, right? Three NADHs and one FADH2 per pyruvate. And now if you involve the second pyruvate also, from one glucose we get two pyruvates, you get two ATPs, six NADHs and two FADH2s. So it is these two, the electron carriers, that's going to go ahead to the electron transport chain. That's going to produce the maximum amount of ATP in the cell. That is the final step in the cellular respiration process. Finally, we will be seeing oxygen here. We will talk more about this in a future video. So the reason why Krebs cycle occurs is not to produce ATP. That's not its main goal. The main goal of the Krebs cycle is to produce the electron carriers, NADH and FADH2, which would then go ahead to the electron transport chain, producing more numbers of ATP.